Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. These words shall be in thine heart. Teach them diligently unto thy children. Talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way. Bind them for a sign upon thine hand. They shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Write them upon the posts of thy house. This is Families of Faith. And thank you for joining us today. This is Families of Faith. My name is Tim Rumsey. My wife, Stacy is with me. This is episode number 28. Yes, we're moving right along. It's hard to believe we've been doing this. This means we've been doing it over half a year. Yes, this year's flying. It has been. For sure. Time flies, as they say. <laughs> yes. Well, what's our topic today? It's me time or we time, which just sounds like, what is this all about? <laughs> They'll have to find out. <laughs> That's right. Um, before we start, we invite you to go to our website at pathwaytoparadise.org. There you can um, find the page for Families of Faith. You can contact us there or through our contact page. We love to hear from our listeners and our viewers and ask us questions. We don't have all the answers, but we'll do our best to find some good answers for you if we don't have some personal experience with your question. Mm -hmm. um, if you're listening on the radio, you can also watch this and go to our YouTube page at Pathway to Paradise Ministries, and there you can find our playlist for families of faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's start with a word of prayer. It's a good place to start. We'll dive into our topic. Okay. Heavenly Father, we um, ask that you would guide and direct not only us, but those watching and listening as we go through this topic today. And um, time is important and it's limited. We don't have an endless supply of it here in this life. And so it is important that we use it wisely. Pray that you would guide and direct us as we uh, seek to understand better how to do that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Stacy, me time or we time? You got to explain a little bit. Yes. <laughs> well, first, I must confess that this episode might have been born out of a little bit of frustration because our society is so focused on me. And so let's just give, give an example of that. If you go to Google and you type in me time, um, this is some of the, the definitions that came up. Having me time means being present with your mind and body to recharge your batteries. You can spend it in various ways depending on what gives you energy. There's some other ones too. Me time is time spent focusing on oneself and doing things one wants to do or the time a person has to himself or herself in which to do something for his or her own enjoyment. So, yeah, we hear people say this, and maybe we've been guilty ourselves once or twice, right? I need some me time, right? Mm -hmm. Or time to myself. Yes, and I'm a mom of four, <laughs> so I'm not saying that we shouldn't have alone time. You're you, not saying that You either. need it. We. We need it. Very badly. I'm an introvert, right? I, <laughs> yeah. So here's an insight into us. I'm introverted. I recharge, right, when I'm alone. Yes. And if I'm around people, too many people for too long, I start shutting down. It drains your battery. It does. And so I, I start looking for a cave somewhere to dive into. <laughs> That's a true story. Now, my wife is different, right? Extroverted. <laughs> <laughs> I recharge with people. It is true. And uh, neither one is wrong, just different. God just created us different that way. But even I need some alone time. Well, I was just going to say that. Even <laughs> extroverts need yes. that that recharging for sure especially busy moms I will say when we're you know with our kids so much of the time um, you just need to clear your mind and think and and pray and um, reset you know um, so I'm all for that and so, you are too <laughs> so we're agreeing that no matter how we're wired or what our uh, personality type is it is important that we we have that time where we can, um, oh, what do you want to say, refocus ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to talk for 23 more minutes, right? So there's <laughs> more to it <laughs> yeah. than just recognizing this. Right. Um, yeah, so the, the focus is, is it's not wrong to have alone time. That's not what we're saying. Uh, we're focusing on this me time. And so just a few more common phrases to illustrate. 
I'm not self-centered. I'm just highly engaged in self-appreciation. Can I, I read one? Yeah. I, I wanted read to read some of these. Yes. Too. I'm not self-obsessed. I just believe in the importance of being your own biggest fan. <laughs> now, in the nice. trumpet world, I play trumpet. So they would say, you have to toot your own horn, right? No one else is going to do it for you. Yeah. Oh, my. Yes. <laughs> okay. So then take time to do what makes your soul happy. Or... You need me time, not because others don't deserve your attention, but because you do. Okay, are these concepts biblical? That's my question. What did Jesus do? He lived on this earth, and um, we know he had alone time. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to his life. Uh, but first, let's take a look at Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. Okay. And we're looking at... Uh, somebody very different than Jesus for a second. <laughs> right. So this is one of the passages in Scripture that gives us some insight into Satan, um, either before he became Satan or as he was becoming Satan, mm -hmm. right? So the uh, biblical um, worldview that's given to us is that God only created good. He did not create evil. And everything bad, everything evil that we see in our world came because of a rebellious angel. His name is Lucifer. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the passages that gives us some insight into what was going on in Lucifer's mind and heart as he rebels against God and becomes the adversary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Isaiah 14, mm -hmm. beginning in verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yes, yeah, so this passage is very well known for being the, he has an eye problem, right? <laughs> five, five times he says something about what he wants or what he feels like he needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's obviously what caused him to fall. It's called uh, selfishness, pride, self-focused living. He looked at himself, and he wanted uh, to be like God, and so he started trying to put himself above God, and um, that's a serious problem. So let's just contrast that with Jesus' life. Okay. And we're going to have a little competition. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Just to try to get through these verses quick enough so that they get the point of okay. each one. Okay. <laughs> so, so this is a speed drill, right? We're going to try for that. So Matthew 14, 23, go. Matthew 14, verse 23. I got it. Okay, me too, but you said it first, <laughs> so go ahead. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Okay, so he had alone time. There's some alone time. Yes, nothing wrong with alone time. We all need that. But what did he do there? <clears throat> well, it says he went into the mountain apart to pray. Mm-hmm. To pray. Okay, that's what he did in that one. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Mark, Mark chapter 1. 35. Verse 35. Ooh, now I know what my kids go through. And we do this with them. <laughs> okay, I got it. I got okay, good job. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out, talking about Jesus, and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. So More me time for Jesus, or at least alone time. Alone time. Not me time. We've got to watch our <laughs> phrases here, our yes. terminology. He goes yes. to a solitary place, and again, he prays. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where, where where did he go? To a solitary place. Just solitary praying. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Mark chapter 14, verse 32. Okay. I got it. Okay. I was job. turning as I said it. That's probably not <laughs> fair, is it? That's all right. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit you here while I shall pray. Okay. So he's in Gethsemane, and... He's obviously praying. We know why he needs prayer there. Well, it's shortly before his death. <clears throat> he's mm -hmm. starting to feel the weight of sins as, you know, the guilt of sin is being placed on him. If we looked at other verses, we would see that Jesus leaves most of his disciples probably close to the entrance of the garden, and he mm -hmm. takes three of them, Peter, James, and John, deeper into the garden, and yes. then he leaves them, asks them to pray, and he goes 
a ways further by himself. So he does end up yes. alone here. Yes, exactly. But And he also shows through several of these passages, if you read around it, um, his disciples how to do this and have alone time. Sometimes he takes them with them. You know, they're apprenticing from him the whole mm -hmm. time. And so they're learning this need as well. Now, we've got a few more verses. Yes. We can look those up. But I want to yeah. say this before I forget. Can we honestly say that there's ever been a person that would have needed uh, time alone more than Jesus? Oh, man. Yeah, it, it's hopefully they can go back and look these passages up to read around it because, yeah, some <laughs> I mean, he has multitudes trying to get to him. And in one place in particular, I think it was the Matthew 14 one, um, He's trying to go have some alone time. He just found out about John the Baptist dying, mm -hmm. and he needed to be alone. But a multitude comes. Instead of saying, no, I have to have alone time, he dealt with them. And so his focus was, his whole mission was for people, and he was certainly doing that. There was <clears throat> all of the, the activities he did, plus there were the enemies that were always on his track yep, yep. trying to catch him. Yes. saying or doing something and sometimes it would say especially in those instances he withdrew hmm. <laughs> as if to say you know it wasn't his time to uh to die or to you know so he withdrew and then he had some alone time at that point and then there's all the miracles yes and i don't have any experience in what it feels like <laughs> or what it takes out of you to, to perform a miracle yeah. um but you can just imagine there's that added mm -hmm. to it as well and all the, the constant demand of people requesting, heal me, help me, you know, cure me. Yeah, you can imagine just a little bit being an introvert, how it would be like to have a multitude <laughs> and just be like, <laughs> so yeah, he needed this alone time, but we're, we're really looking at what he did okay. during this alone time. Okay, what's our next one? Luke, Luke chapter five, verse 16. Okay, go, go, go. Okay, I'm there. Okay, this is one of those withdrew. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Um, this was after he healed a leper. Um, and I believe, I just go back and read a little bit. That, yeah. Great the, multitudes the priests, came together to hear. So there's masses of people. And show thyself to, to the priest him. after. And I think he knew they would be upset. Mm -hmm. So he withdrew. Sometimes it's good to disappear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he went into the wilderness and yeah. prayed. And he prayed. Okay. Luke 6, verse 12. Okay. And I've got that. Okay. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray, and he continued all night in prayer to God. Okay. All night. Where are you? 6, 12? That was Luke 6, 12. Okay. Yes. So why is he all night in prayer? This one, I just want to just add right here. This is interesting to me because this is a, right before he appoints the 12 disciples and he spends all night in prayer. That's, that's interesting. Important decision. Yeah. He needed that um, time with his father to figure out how to do this And, right. you know, someone may be saying, if you know the disciples, well, what about Judas, right? Maybe he should have prayed a little longer. Oh, good point. <laughs> but we're actually told that... Um, mm -hmm. Judas kind of inserted himself into the group, and mm -hmm. Jesus didn't refuse him, even though he knew uh, the problems in Judas's character. Yes. He uh, was willing to give him a chance. But he was the one, the one that the disciples chose, and... <sighs> oh, they looked up to him as the most capable and able. Yeah. That just shows um, God's ways are not our ways. And we as humans, we can't see the heart. Yeah. So we look at whatever outward <laughs> we <laughs> tend to look at. And that, that wasn't it. It wasn't enough. Okay, the last one is Luke 9, verse 18. And I got it. You have it? I cheated. I you turned there beforehand. <laughs> ah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> and it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him. And he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? Okay. So here he, it says he's alone, but his disciples are with him as well. So maybe they find him yeah. after a night of prayer. And 
Yeah, there are a couple of instances where it specifically says his disciples are with him. It just almost seems as if he's trying to pull them along and show them how to do this, you know, um, a few times. But there's many times he's alone. Well, and if you imagine the uh, setting that he's normally in with hundreds, sometimes maybe thousands of people trying to get mm -hmm. close to him, um, to be with a few close friends mm -hmm. is a recharge time as well. Mm -hmm. you know? Good point. Good point. Um, so let's draw some lessons from okay. some of these, some points to note from those verses that we just looked at. I, I found three, and there might be more. But um, number one, alone time for Jesus that we can tell here was always outdoors. And that's just interesting to me. Um, nature is God's second book. And I don't think there's anything more peaceful especially for a busy mom <laughs> to get out of our house and we're we're trying to keep everything nice and tidy and and we see everything that has to be done and go outdoors i have done this more than once well, there's a good reason for that <laughs> you go outside you see all the dirt there and then you come back to your house and you think well there's not much dirt in here well that's true too <laughs> that's that's a good point but i think there's other lessons that god wants us to learn from nature and it's just peaceful it is. You know, so many of Jesus' parables were drawn from things of nature, and a lot of them mm -hmm. used a, a seed in some way. You know, mm -hmm. a seed is growing, a seed is being scattered. And I'm sure that many of those lessons were impressed upon Jesus or, that, you know, they really sunk into his mind so he could share them as he was alone out in nature, spending that time in prayer. Exactly. Um, very good point. The outdoors, it's not just a place to unwind, um, but to learn from, like as you pointed out, the lessons. And it just removes the artificial, which is so important, especially for us today. I mean, mm -hmm. it was important for Jesus, but uh, imagine how much more we need it today when we're surrounded by uh, so much artificial, right? Mm -hmm. Our devices that we're staring at way too much of the time. Mm -hmm. um, the music and soundtrack <laughs> that's so often there. The uh, Man-made. Wherever you go, yeah. um, there's a lot of artificiality. Yes, and you get some natural remedies. I mean, several of them at the same time. You get sunshine, fresh air. You might get exercise if you're hiking somewhere. Um, so it's healthy. So, okay, I noticed that. What else do we learn from what we read? Well, I think we've mentioned this several times, yes. but the purpose, mm -hmm. um, at least the primary purpose mm -hmm. of his alone time was for him to pray. Yes. I just, I'm just, it just makes me stop and pause after, you know, looking on Google and all the things that they say about me time. It's such a focus on me and what I want. And, and this, every time, we don't have any record of that, of Jesus' time alone for him. It was all to connect with his Father in prayer. If he needed that, please tell me how much more we need it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow. We'd be doing really good if that's how we recharge all the time. Well, help. and you, it wasn't short amounts of time that Jesus spends out there. I mean, we read a couple of verses, it's all night. Mm -hmm. Now, he probably didn't do that every night. No. But um, when he went to pray and he went for that alone time, it was a significant amount of time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can uh, tell from my experience, and I think many people would identify with this. Um, yeah, nature's great, mm -hmm. but you can't just take a quick walk and mm. get that experience that we need because mm -hmm. we get so wound up tight um, in our day-to-day -day life that it really does take time to unwind and time to calm down. Like and um, mm -hmm. you know, even a couple hours usually is not long enough. Yeah, exactly. That's why he took longer <laughs> many times. No. Okay, and a third point that um, we got from it was that Jesus recharged for the purpose of his ministry and for service. Well, that's a good point, because even his prayers weren't selfish prayers. No. You know, which disciples to choose. And, um, you know, 
yeah, what to do next. I'm sure he was constantly connecting. What do I do next? Where do I go? It says he didn't do, didn't do anything, didn't say anything except his father told him. So well, you think about a lot of these uh, stories that we have in the Gospels where Jesus meets a woman at the well, right? And she mm -hmm. ends up accepting him as the Messiah, and then the whole city comes out. How did he know to go there, and how was he in tune with the Holy Spirit to know when and where to stop mm -hmm. and how to start that conversation? Uh, it was the time that he had spent mm -hmm. in prayer the night before. Yes. Uh, so that Amen. time uh, not only recharges us, whatever that means, right, but it focuses us, should, if we're praying, it focuses us uh, into communication with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And makes us um, more susceptible and receptive. Sensitive. To sensitive his, to what yes. he's saying. Amen to that. Okay, so we need to draw some practical suggestions. I mean, those were, I, I hope, <laughs> so I hope that, from, that we're learning from Jesus. But um, Apply it to our lives. Yeah, apply it to us. Some practical suggestions. And I'm sure this is not exhaustive, but just some things that came to mind. Well... <clears throat> We are made differently. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, one question to that's probably worth spending a little bit of time thinking about um, is what spiritually recharges and refreshes me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I, I think this kind of self-focus is not a bad kind of self-focus. No. We need to be aware of how God has wired and created us. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, obviously the, the fishermen that he chose as his disciples, they did a lot of that. and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and Jesus seemed to like mountains. You found him often going to a mountain. You can, I can identify to that. with that. <laughs> yes. Okay, maybe here's another um, thought. Think recreation rather than entertainment. And I think often in our world, it's entertainment. Um, and, and we've done it. But every time we do it, we regret it, <laughs> haven't we? So On often. Entertainment, yeah. almost all the time. Mm -hmm. We're always like, Next time we try to do something fun, <laughs> let's just do recreation rather than entertainment. We're always either disappointed or um, we have to run, teach something <laughs> to our kids. So, you know, what is it about entertainment per se? It, the idea or the goal of entertainment, I would say usually, is to distract us from life, right? Yeah. I just want to escape. I want to shut my mind off. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to have fun, right? It's very similar to drugs, you know, or alcohol or any other escape. I just don't want to think about I just want to escape. And um, much entertainment really uh, captures the mind and the senses, and mm -hmm. we just kind of get absorbed in the experience. Uh, maybe try to live out through something else or someone else to help our problems go away or something. Yeah, well, know? that's the human way the uh, <laughs> uh real draw of so many movies mm -hmm. right you watch the the hero or the heroine and they're doing something that you wish you could do and mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just a it's a way of escape really mm -hmm. and it, when you're done all your problems and your issues and your challenges they're still there and you're in no better place maybe a worse place to deal with those than you were before yeah exactly without tools to and probably go. with less money yeah that's true too a lot of entertainment is not cheap okay and so another one uh well just follow christ's example that's what we've been talking about looking at all these gospel um like encounters that jesus we have um so take his example. If he need prayer and time outdoors, how much more do we as sinful human beings need that? Now, that's admittedly easier for some folks than for others based on where we live, right? Um, for some people, you can walk out your front door and you're out in the country and you're very close mm -hmm. to nature. For others, it's going to be a more uh, deliberate mm -hmm. uh, exercise to get out of a city somewhere or whatever yes. the environment is. Um, but it is worth it. Yes. Even if you can't do it every single day, right? Make it something you do as often as possible. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, and then pray that the Lord will give you a burden for souls so that you can be others focused. Make it your mission to win souls for Christ. It is our great commission after all. What is the Great Commission? You can mm. read it. <laughs> well, we find it in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Mm-hmm. 
Thanks for not making me rush, right? And it wasn't a race to find that one. <laughs> Here's what Jesus said. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Mm-hmm. That really is an important point, to pray and ask God to give us a love for other people. Mm-hmm. Because that is something that none of us naturally have. Mm -hmm. We might think it's love, but in our sinful condition, what we usually call love is really self-focused somehow, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What am I going to get out of this relationship? Mm -hmm. The kind of love that we we need to pray for is the totally selfless type of love. It's a truly storing our treasures up in heaven. Yeah. You know, winning souls, people that will be in heaven as a result of your interaction with them, you pointing them to Christ. Um, And if you really want to get bold, pray like Jesus did. I'm sure he prayed this, right? Give me a divine appointment tomorrow. Yes, yes. And then help me to recognize it when it happens. That's the other important part because uh, there have been so many experiences in my life where uh, I've had an interaction or avoided one and then realized afterwards, you know what? I probably I totally mishandled that because that was probably God trying to, to... to line something up there. So mm-hmm. we need to also pray that we are sensitive and recognize it. You know, just want to insert this really quick too. As a couple, you know, we are the family as a married couple before kids. And then when kids leave the nest, it's us again. So we need to have a mission. Our kids are our mission. I mean, that's our, my greatest mission is to raise my kids for the Lord, but also have a mission for others um, that can give us purpose when right. the kids leave the nest, too. We, it, it, it happens, right? People start drifting and not mm-hmm. sure, especially probably the mom that stayed at home, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's my purpose in life now? Mm-hmm. And um, there's yes. no need to feel that way because there no. are plenty of other missions the Lord that can have can for you. you can do as a couple. Yeah. Okay. Stacy, our title. Me time yes. or we time? Yes, we need to come back to that, don't yeah. we? So what does that mean? Um, obviously, I think they've understood that it's not me time that we should be focused on, but we time. But what is the we? <laughs> and that's really our time with God. He's the one that recharges us and sets our focus back right again and that we need to connect with to get strength and wisdom and energy to serve him and so it's not me and what i want to do but it's we (laughs) together yes okay so there's your challenge right Mm -hmm. um take some more time with god Uh, be deliberate about it ask him to help you and uh, he'll answer those prayers and he'll send you blessings as a result thanks for joining us today on families of faith hope that you'll join us next time and keep building your family of faith every single day Families of Faith is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. Find us online at www.pathwaytoparadise.org.